YouTubers, what's happening? Today we're going to try to find out if we can improve our miles per gallon by taking a look at why this wheel is dragging back. second I'm going to spin it, you'll be able to hear the drag. So it's either, well we're just going to take a look at it. But already got the car up on the jack, it's a 2005 Pontiac Vibe and currently it gets like 29 miles to the gallon on a regular basis. I don't do much city driving, mostly rural, uh, but I go all speeds, so I, I take her all the way up to 80 at times, but um, my average is 29, and I hear other Vibe owners say that they get closer to 35, so I thought I'd take a look at what's causing me to get a little bit less mileage. So, right now, I already have this loosened off, we're going to take us off. I'm going to pass along a little tip. Can you see that right there? We got 21 millimeter and we got 76 foot pounds. I like to do that first time I get into a wheel so that next time I go in here, I'm gonna remember what tools I need and whenever I go to torque the nuts, it's already written there. And I use just a paint stick. You can get that at any parts store, Napa. I bought it at Napa, I like Napa, Napa parts. So yeah, write that on there, it's permanent marker. No one can see it once the hubcap's on. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these uh, lug nuts off. Another little tip, um, right now I don't have an air compressor set up, so I just put a quick chuck in there and a little cordless and it speeds everything up. I already let you listen to this first. Let me uh, thread one nut on and give it a spin so you can hear the drag. Okay, I'm going to give it a spin, you'll hear the drag. Okay, so obviously not in an, an ideal situation. Okay, YouTubers, when I went to remove the wheel, oh boy, it was galled. It was uh, the back of this rim was just stuck really hard onto this drum so had to put thread a lug nut on and then not all the way almost all the way and then come from the bottom side with a sledgehammer and just bang on the rubber don't hit the rim and then it loosens take your nut off and the tire comes right off now when we go to put this back together let me share a little tip so that doesn't happen next time okay so on to the drum removal right now i can't pull this drum off with my hands so they give you these little holes okay and these bolts this is a eight metric and it's a 1.25 thread pitch so you just want to get those started and start to work the bolts in a little bit at a time and it'll assist in the removal of that drum otherwise good luck I think we're probably there now. Yeah, we're able to slip that off. So, eh, not too bad. Looks nice and smooth. Okay, so here's the tip I wanted to share with you when you put your wheel back on. This stuff's great. Me daddy taught me about this when I was a young lad. And uh, I use it for everything that's going to be in contact with the climate and, you know, rain, snow. Anyway, just rubber or uh, wire brush in between here, just real quick, knock off the big stuff. There isn't much big stuff. Let's look at the wheel. There isn't much big stuff here either, but here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna, well, see, I use it so often, I'm down to the bottom of the barrel. Anyway, we're just gonna paint these surfaces right here. And where you see that rust building up, I'm gonna paint that with some anti-seize. And the next time you or I pull this wheel off, I'm going to be happy that I did this because it's going to come right off. And there you have it, folks. All right. Okay, YouTubers, we found the problem. The problem is, in its current state, the adjuster should be in this groove and it's pushing up on this so we need to get that down into its slot now as you see this lever comes down you can see this is the way it should have been 
So I actually was driving around with a brake that was kind of a quarter of the way pushed on. So now at this point, I'm gonna slide this drum back on. Just slide a nut on here. And we're gonna give it a spin test and see. I like to get that nice and sound. Okay. All right, let's give it a spin. Nothing, no noise. Sweet. Now, I'm gonna zip this all back up and I'm gonna go fill up my gas tank and then in about a week, I'm gonna give an update on this video to see if I truly increased my gas mileage. Thanks for tuning in. Okay, we're ready to check out this miles per gallon increase. So you guys can see right now we're on E, the car's running. We got 364 miles on the odometer since the last time I filled up. So uh, we're here at the pump. Go ahead and show the pump. We're going to get uh, the pump fired up and we're going to show you how many gallons I put in and we'll do the math. Okay, I usually get about, I usually have to get a full 10 and a half gallons, anywhere from 10 and a half to 11 gallons for this uh We'll click off and then we'll get the calculator out and do the math. Okay, so we'll just we're gonna round that up to eleven point two. Okay, we got about eleven point two. And so let me grab the calculator. Okay, let's take a look here. So we got three, six, four divided by eleven point two equals. <gasps> we just increased our gas mileage by we got three and a half more gallon miles per gallon because we fixed that brake. 